Tonight, it's our pleasure to welcome two tremendous representatives from AXPAT. First, we have Brandon Berry, who played baseball at the University of Washington and then transferred to Cal State Northridge and was drafted by the Miami Marlins in 2016. He played a couple years of pro ball and has a lot of valuable on-field experience and just has a great knowledge for the game. And also from AXPAT, we have Trevor Stocking, and I've known Trevor for over 20 years now. We actually played against each other in high school. But Trevor was a freshman All-American at Northern Illinois University and then transferred to Evansville. And a neat thing about Trevor is that he pioneered the first bat sensor to ever exist with a company called Zep. Trevor's just a great baseball mind and he loves the game. And you can just tell how much passion he has by the amount of work that he puts in day in and day out. So without further delay, here is Brandon Berry and Trevor Stocking. A lot of major league players um, have a lot of issues with hand and wrist issues, and this oval kind of takes that away. But for the average player, the biggest thing, I get to repeat my best swing more often. I get more control when I release the barrel, which Adam, I'm sure when you were playing, control is everything when you're facing 96 with movement. Yeah, I definitely, that's why I appreciate all the young players is that you, you can control your body with all your mechanics, but all your mechanics, that's all leading to what is happening with the barrel of the bat. So bat control, barrel control is everything. Right. And what we're trying to do with the axe handle is, you know, everything that you're doing within your swing everything comes out of your hand, that bottom hand with what you're trying to do. It's the only thing that stays on the bat on your swing the whole time. And to be able to control that better and to maximize your speed is kind of the secret sauce of, of what the axe handle does and what we're trying to do. And you'll see a little movement, might be hard to see right here, but that flush backside like we talked about in oval, there's a little bit of movement as you go to release the barrel. And we might not think that it's a lot, but Again, when we're talking against the best pitchers in the world, every little bit counts and matters. Right, Adam? I mean, <laughs> you, you faced it. So um, that little hitch in your swing, that little movement, um, what you'll see with the axe handle as you go through, as you release the barrel into impact, there's that continuous grip. There isn't that movement. You're able to completely control it through your swing. You'll hear a lot of players, a lot of major league players or young players just say that, they feel like they're able to just keep their barrel through the zone so much longer. Um, that's huge. And most often you see players that need to slow down their barrel, slow down their speeds to do that. With an axe handle, you get to maximize your bat speed, but also maintain control all the way through. So Trev, there's one thing I noticed when I was watching these videos, mm -hmm. is that on the one that, uh, with the round knob, like if you watch his back elbow, like it never really gets to full extension uh, that's one thing I noticed. It kind of still, there's still flexion back here, but with the ax bat knob, it's really extended. It looks like a little bit better extension for me. Yeah, now that you mentioned that, I, I can kind of see that. Yeah, it just seems like it gets a little bit better extension. I don't know. That's what I picked up on the videos that I looked at. So. Yeah, I think um, both Brandon and I had a lot of sensor experience. And when you look at um, being on plane, and I think Brandon will talk about this a lot. Um, the axe handle essentially puts you being on plane from start to finish and the ability to be able to maintain that through your swing, you kind of see that all the way through with what you're talking about. Brandon, I have a, uh, I have a question. This is uh, Aaron Nicola from the Oakland A's. Hey. Good to see you again. Um, I understand that you said you were from Blast Motion or worked with Blast for, for a while. Um, can you take the blast sensor and actually put it on the handle like you can a normal bat? Or um, are you to the point where maybe you can have it embedded uh, into the bat? Because I know in, in today's world, technology is uh, moving into the game. And so I know a lot of hitters rely on a lot of that data. That's a great question. Yeah, um, the axe bats and axe handles are supported with blast. Um, all you have to do if you already have a blast sensor, um, just open up your blast baseball app and. Uh, in your my bats profile, you just got to indicate to the system that it, you're using an axe bat. Um, just because of the slope itself, the algorithms do have to adjust a little, a little bit. So when you install the sensor on the, on the knob of the bat, um, you just got to tell the system that you're using an axe bat, the length and weight, and then you're going to get that accurate swing data. Um, and, and 
another great question moving forward for sure embedded bats are going to be a part of the game um, you know sensor technology is approved on the professional side from AAA down to rookie ball to be used in game um, so we're definitely going to be on the forefront of having embedded wood bat solutions um, to be able to capture that in-game data because that's kind of the holy grail when we start looking at objective you know whether it's pre-impact data or post-impact data is what are we doing in the game and if we're doing it well okay great how do we repeat that so it's it's a really good question the same thing goes with weighted bat training so our central nervous system is essentially our command center and the thing that we use to kind of uh, repeat our swing but as we all know our central nervous system it gets bored really easily so we can get really used to what we're doing and I mean, major league side I'm sure that that's a good thing but then at times it makes our training it makes everything that we're doing not really it plateaus essentially um, when we change and do something new our central nervous system can, uh, responds really quickly to change so essentially like jumping into an ice bath uh, versus like a hot tub you know that change gets us to do something new and can essentially accelerate um, improvement and so what we're trying to do as speed trainers is that same thing and what we'll talk about next is how do we essentially shock the system so that you can become your own best coach and see more improvement not by taking more swings but essentially by doing things better um, so this is the bb core version we have a youth version also where there isn't an underload bat the reason being all kids are already swinging an underload bat because they're swinging drop tens or whatever uh, so they get the overload bats Trevor, i have a question sure um <clears throat> so this is a training program so are we focused on just training fast twitch, slow twitch muscle fibers? Or are we trying to put both together and, and square up the ball like, like you said earlier? Is this a, a program where Great question. it doesn't matter where the ball goes? We're just trying to torque the body. We're trying to stress it 100% max effort as heavy as we can go or as light as we can go, 100% effort. And then we go to the batting cage and work on squaring the ball up with, with our game bat. Or do you see that it's essential to swing the 20% overload, 20% underload, and trying to hit, trying to square that ball up? Does that make sense? Yeah, no, it sure does. Um, it's a really good question. So uh, the if I'm just trying to build, you know, the – bat speed, exit speed, and I'm just grinding in my, my house, right? Um, it works great. You have the booklet, you get, you know, 12 weeks of in-season, 12 weeks of out-season training, where you're just grinding, you're putting in that work. It's essentially weightlifting for your swing, right? Um, but we've designed the bats so that I can take them out and go live with them if I wanted to. So if I just want to use the, uh, the barrel-loaded bat or the handle-loaded bat, and I'm working on trying to take this heavier tool and hit live or even just BP where the ball's moving. I can do that too. And to me, I've seen the biggest benefit doing it with both. Obviously it's great to build that strength, but I'm sure as a, facing the best pitchers in the world, the best players can pick up any different bat and still square up the ball. And so many players just hit off the tee these days and they're not challenging themselves to make their own adjustments and movements. And I think that's where the design of this, of what we've done, where you can take these out and actually go with moving pitches is huge. Um, this underload bat actually, in the past, uh, nobody's been able to make an underload bat that you could do a moving pitch with because of the bat dents and cracks in two seconds. With ours, you can actually do it with flips. So um, with that underload bat where you're losing your mechanics all over the place, with a moving pitch, it really forces you to kind of control your body and. and that battle of what you're talking about, where it's not just about going, having the fastest bat speed, but it's also about being able to square up the ball. So, you know, yes. I, um, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I, I was saying, yes, it, it's built for both. This is, this stuff is very fascinating to me because JT and I, we've been doing this, we started in junior college in 1999, I started in, in or 2000, I started in junior college. 
where I actually made my own donut that was 20% under load yeah. or overload, excuse me. With Put the pennies with, on it and everything like that? Yeah, I mean, we measured it out and then we had what was called a, do you know what a Swift stick is? is that Swift the stick is this, is this really, it's yeah. It's like, almost like a PVC, you can hit just Yeah, the, we had, I, oh, I just yeah. one of those. So it's like yeah. almost a 50% under load, super light. Yeah. So yeah, I that, remember those. I think fast. we've all built our own overload, underload bats yeah. in our lifetime, right? Yeah, no, it's like, well, exactly what you're talking about is the fact that your product provides both benefits. So purely trying to challenge the neuromuscular system and create the muscle fiber types to give a player the ability or the capacity to actually swing the bat faster is one element of it. So by way of doing the overload, underload training, you're just like you said, weightlifting for your swing, um, but then also doing that underload piece of it to help boost that the CNS, and then the self organization that happens on top of that by way of using the overload underload and the body having to self organize and sort of figure out the mechanics. So it's really cool. But like Kevin was talking about, I mean, we we talk about it all the time how it was one of the major things that separated him was doing bat speed training, like actually consistently do, what is you were doing it four days a week for i mean it, it was all random but upwards of four or five days a week where he was doing a set and rep scheme of a light bat a heavy bat and a game bat um to develop that bat speed you know and it, trying to find you're right the underloads man like the amount of metal fungos that we've dented <laughs> and have bent in half you know and the swift stick was like felt like your back was going to explode so swinging that, um, the 20% underload that you guys have is amazing. It's awesome. Who's that a Thanks. for you and JT with these young kids or like to the programs you did, you think about weightlifting, you want everything like, um, you don't want one side stronger than the other side. So did you ever get to the other side of the plate and swing left-handed to kind of balance things out or did that not matter? Not with, not with bat speed workouts, but yeah, I would get in there on flips you know and t and just kind of try to unwind the body yeah you know towards my career i you know i had some some health issues with the back or whatever you know just from the wear and tear and you know and so i i and i heard that mark mcguire did it mm. you know jim lefebvre was my hitting coach of san diego who coached him for many years and so well shoot I'll, I'll try that you know so yes i did get on the left side of the plate everybody thought i was messing around you know, but it actually felt good to swing left-handed you know i felt like i was i was unwinding yeah. I've heard that can be beneficial from a neurological standpoint too, like for your eyes also, mm -hmm. seeing it from both sides of the plate. And um, my, fav my favorite training bat personally is the long trainer. So this thing's a beast and Brandon has it in his hand right now. I won't make him swing, but um, just a beast uh, of a bat. So Brandon, what's the length and weight on that? Yeah, this thing's 37 inch, 37 ounce. So it's massive. Um, it's big so boy. From an athlete's perspective, especially younger level athlete, um, it takes your whole body to get this thing around. Um, anytime we're, you know, anytime we're doing front toss or even live live arm with this thing, you actually have to really focus on sequencing your body efficiently to be able to actually get to the ball. Um, absolutely, one of my favorites as well, and it also helps with swing path as well. But um, the long trainer is great for the kinetic sequence component. Yeah, so it's like when you, you know, back in the day when you hit with a donut on the back, right? <laughs> right. Everything had to fire perfectly for that just to feel good, right? Because if you had a little wrinkle in the swing or you're off time or, you know, you cast the hands, I mean, it just felt really, you know, like there's a speed bump in it. So that's right. what I like about the donut also or swinging a heavy bat was everything just has to fire properly for that swing to be smooth. And so mm -hmm. I felt like that kind of self-organized me as well. So from a, one thing that we do with, with like the long trainer and then you guys' set of overload, underload bats is basically just a form of differential training where the kids will take one or two swings and then switch bats automatically, right? Like trying to introduce more chaos into the training yes. just to, to um, challenge them a little bit more and, again, force them to understand where their body is in space, what they need to do from a sequencing standpoint, from a timing standpoint to make sure that they find barrel. Um, do you guys like advise doing that at all? Trying to mix up the different bats in one BP session? How many pitches with the swing? How do you structure that typically? I love it. And I think, you know, 
if we're talking coaches wise, you know your players. So there are certain players that you could probably do two or three swings. Other players, that, you know, you're making changes. But to me, the two or three swings, I think is great to be able to switch it up. I love the ability for the player to make their own adjustments and to not have to yap in their ear of one, two, three, four steps of how to swing. Um, I don't know how you've, like you said, you've been trying to do it, but the yeah, shorter, the better. Um, trying to do too many, I think, is just gets people in bad habits and, and isn't as much fun either. Well, well, can you? I'm glad you said that. I, I wrote this down, and you said it multiple times. The fact that you want to have quality over quantity. You know, I think a lot of times at a, at a younger age, inexperienced players, they think more is better when actually less is more, if that makes sense. Even, even at our minor league level, we have guys that want to go in and swing, 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 swing. Um, and the more swings they take, the worse things get. Not all the time, but, but sometimes because they're overtraining. They're not understanding that it's the quality of the rep, not necessarily the quantity of the rep. So I'm glad you mentioned that. I'm glad you brought that up because I think that's an invaluable point that, that all young hitters uh, need to understand that um, just like pitchers, there's only so many bullets you can throw. I personally believe there's only so many swings you can take take before the body starts to fatigue and it just becomes counterproductive. So the last one, the last trainer here is kind of the, uh, the sister of the long trainer. So the short trainer, which is uh, 28 inches. How many ounces, Brandon? 31? Yeah, 28, 31. Yeah, so um, kind of the opposite of the long trainer, but still heavy. Um, and, you know, this one, hitters that are really jumpy or, you know, have a really hard time going the other way. Um, guys that have really hard time with posture. Um, just a great bat for that player to work with. This one, you can do a few more swings than, you know, the 37 ounce long trainers, which is nice. Um, but working those two together, the long trainer and short trainer is a lot of fun. Uh, I also kind of look at, I think about it as like the, the, the Arenado drill, you know, where he's takes a quick step back and then swings. Um, same thing. We're, we're, we're working on that kinetic sequence um, and how to properly accelerate the bat into the swing plane, um, you know, kind of referring to the blast motion side of things, this is gonna really help with that rotational acceleration comp uh, component um, and how well we're accelerating. So if you think about our 60 time running, you know, running a 60, you know, we're gonna have our max speed at our 60, that's that bat speed component, but what we wanna improve is, is how quickly we can accelerate our bat um, to that max speed. And so this is, is gonna be a good drill to help for that. And again, T-work, front toss, you name it. You know, Brandon, when I do these camps, I travel around the, the southwest down here and do camps, and this is the biggest problem I see with kids, whatever, 12 to 14 years old, is they just step right into the ball. They don't step back to load and then explode and then get that, that rotational acceleration and that acceleration through their bat head through the finish no. is because they're not stepping back. It's, it, it's everything, the rhythm and timing. Oh, yeah, and I'm not sure if you guys have seen it, but you could use that wedge. It's like a yoga wedge. JT and Kuz, I'm not sure if you guys have seen that. But on the, the one that you vel Velcro on your back foot, like the power wedge? I get I, I've never seen the Velcro. That sounds pretty cool, though. Um, it's just like, a, it's for like your yoga. back foot to keep your back knee inside your back foot, kind of? All right, so you don't, you don't, what is it called? Sway back? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're back. Yeah, we, I've seen those. Yeah. There's a lot of kids when they do the rocker drill, they kind of stand up and they don't, they or they sway back. But the that wedge really keeps their back knee driven towards the pitcher a little bit. Yeah, it's that back shin angle, making back sure that shin, yeah. shin angle stays forward. Yeah. And that's the biggest problem that I see that I work with young players, but is they don't create that that load on the backside. I've got something. I've got something quickly, and I don't want to uh, take too much time here, but maybe Brendan can, can touch on it. Mm -hmm. uh, worked in Blast. Uh, are you familiar with the K-Vest? Yes. Okay, so, so I don't know if you want to touch on that just very briefly, maybe, because you're talking about all the um, kinesthetic movements and biomechanics of the swing. And, uh, you know, K-Vest is something that we use within our system with the A's that basically uh, allows the hitter to see their sequencing uh, and, and the way they hit and to make it more efficient. Uh, maybe that's something that you could maybe parlay and say either blast or the K-Vest with some of these drills. 
Yeah, great point. So I, I don't unfortunately have too much experience with KVEST. I feel like I do understand the concept for the most part. And how I always like to think about it coming from BLAST is BLAST was kind of your x-ray where, you know, I go into the doctor's office, hey, something's feeling off. I'm going to get an x-ray. And then once that doctor says, yep, we're off a little bit, that's when we use that KVEST, which is more of an MRI, where we're really going to dive deeper into that athlete's body. Um, from my understanding, the KVEST component kind of helps you really diagnose what part of the body isn't sequencing efficiently or moving as, as properly as possible. So whether it's our hips or our shoulder or where in the body is, is are, are we off a little bit? Um, and so to the, to the drill, I mean, yeah, if, if we have technology, if we have access to those things, it's, it's awesome. And, and we can actually validate our training um, to make sure that, you know, what we're what the time spent in the, in the training environment is time well spent. We have objective data to validate that. Yeah, no doubt, for, for sure. I think all the uh, technology and all the data is just uh, adding credibility to, you know, the training process. And it, it improves our, our, on our end coaching, it improves our training as well. Well, and exactly what Trevor was sort of touching on earlier, how the heavier bats and especially that long trainer promote better sequencing. It's like probably very, very interesting to watch or at least do a study on looking at somebody that has some issues with sequencing and then working with that long trainer. And I bet it cleans a lot of that up. Another one, another great drill working on the kinetic sequence component is the high knee drill. Um, you know, we're focusing on the, like getting high intense swings with that, um, generating our momentum and, and, um, really just trying to crush that ball. And all of these drills, um, you know, are great with our game bats, but they're also great drills to be using with our speed trainers, our long bats, our short bats. So um, just mix, mixing up those uh, different tools in our hands and giving ourselves some challenging drills are, um, are super great to be doing right now, especially while everyone's at home. That's a good drill to do just for the balance purpose of it. I mean, hitting is so much to do with balance. So I like that. I'm loading that back hip. Well, Trev and Brandon, we appreciate you guys again. Yeah, Brandon, Trevor, this is uh, Aaron again. Thanks so much for the presentation. It's tremendous. I know a few of our guys in our system use the AxBet and speak very, very uh, highly of it. Um, and for those of you uh, on the call tonight, if, uh, if you have found this information valuable or any of the webinars that we've done uh, up to this point, uh, we'd certainly appreciate a, a positive review or maybe go out and tell somebody, you know, if it's making a positive impact or bringing some value to, to you and your son and or daughter and your team, your organization, it would be great to continue to, to grow the webinar, disseminate the information and, and, and make our game better. So uh, thanks for the support. Thanks, uh, thanks uh, Trev. We appreciate you guys' time.